Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. You used to wake up every morning and say, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It was like morning. <laughs> good morning. That was it. Good morning. Can you give us the good morning song? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. That's when you're happy about somebody dying. <laughs> what? <laughs> good morning. Oh. Uh. Ah, yeah, <laughs> three days gone. <laughs> I'm not cutting anybody down here, but uh, this house is quite large and it is quite boomy because we don't. <laughs> yeah, we haven't Let's got see. like our velvet drapes up there. We haven't so. got drapes or carpeting or anything. I mm -hmm. mean, there will never be any carpeting on these wooden floors. Maybe some no, carpets. Just nice, but... beautiful, you know. Yeah, these beautiful floors. Uh -huh. Persian rugs, as they say. But, um, yeah, I can't turn off speakers because I'm on the phone. <laughs> the guy said... Plus speakers, it's, you don't it's, have speakers. I know. It's, um, it's maybe annoying. And I'm sorry for that, folks, but that's just the way it is right now until we find a better place to, to do this. Or uh, just a different place. In our little coffee nook. Yeah, this is the little coffee nook. It's like we're sitting in a little cafe. Yeah, it's like it's, it's what it's like in a little cafe. <clears throat> it's very nice. Hey, have you got any other stories about Carl Radel that you can think of? Because I just we just heard from somebody that you are actually on uh, England's tree of iconic rock and roll rock artists. Rock artists. Excuse I me. thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that that'd be a first. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Carl's stories. He used to keep to himself. He was a loner. Yeah. And, uh. Did anybody know Carl very, very well? I mean, he seemed well, like a very yeah, quiet guy. People from, people from Tulsa knew him real well. Uh, Kay Poorboy, you know, of course. She loved him and, and was in, in love with him. But um, Carl kept to himself, you know. He, I remember when I first met him, he had a girlfriend. He lived down the road from the plantation, a uh, place where we, I used to live, Jimmy Carstein, Chuck Off Blackwood. Off Matilla Hall. You know, and then we rehearsed the Delaney and Bonnie band there. And, um, but he lived like three blocks down. And he had a, uh, his girlfriend's name was Judy. She was a pretty gal. And had a uh, had a red iron setter and uh, named Dixie. I used to borrow his motorcycle to go find my way around L.A. What kind of motorcycle did he have? Trump Bonneville. And he let me. He said, "Why don't you just Ooh, take my bike one. so you can find yourself, get around, and find out where you are here?" Because I was on. I could only go where I could walk to, you know. And I didn't have a transportation then. And uh, after after we left and, and, and went out on the road, it seemed like he never went back home. You know, he never he never went back to his house down off Matilla High. Really? Mm, not that I know of. You know, because uh, I mean, he was on the road the whole time. I mean, he went straight from one band. That, he went from Gary Lewis and the Playboys to oh, Delaney yeah. and Bonnie and Friends. You know, to uh, Mad Dogs and Englishmen, uh, 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 Derek and the Dominoes. All these, they just all flowed together for him. For me, it was like this, then that, you know. Uh, with Carl, he was playing, everybody wanted Carl Radle to play with him. I mean, who wouldn't, you know. I want a great bass player and a lovely man. And he was real simple, but what he played was just... Incredible. I mean, it was like yeah, he right put, on. Yeah. He's right on, real simple and driving. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know uh, if, uh, if 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 he might have been, you know, because everybody, the whole sex thing out there is a little bit, you know, iffy. You know, people that would, 
you would think we're straight. We're not, you know. They, they or there'll be people who. But are, still that way. But yeah. you know, yeah. But when you're from Memphis, you know, it's like it's, things are a little different. Were anyway in, in 1967 and 68. Well, you didn't talk about that. No, huh? Well, anyway, we're on the road all, all the time. The call is never. I know he wasn't with Judy anymore, but. Uh, Never, he never had any any uh, women around him. Oil guys. He well, was a maybe he didn't. total loner, hmm. you know. And I was up every morning, you know, bang, 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 waking everybody up, you know, because I was excited about life. <laughs> <laughs> you still are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nothing's changed in that department. Uh, this is really great. But I, I, I thought, well, I guess Carl's gay, you know. <laughs> I did. I figured he was gay, <laughs> you, you know. God. Yeah, and, uh, and then one time I opened the, he, he had left his hotel door cracked just a little bit. It didn't yeah. get, didn't close correctly, you know. And I said, good morning, and I popped open the door, and he was in bed with three women. I said, all right. <laughs> oh, Boy, what a great sight this is, you know. <laughs> Oh, I was beginning to wonder. <laughs> <laughs> well, they yeah. were wondering about you as well, so there you go. Ah, everybody wondered about me, you know. <laughs> all, all the girls loved me and all the gay guys loved me. Well, I couldn't be with anybody because I had a rash, you know, and I was embarrassed by it. And so I wouldn't get naked in front of anybody <laughs> no, for any reason, you know. I had a rash on my legs and on my stomach, and I'd had it for years and years and years and could never get rid of it. And uh, from the time I was a boy, you know, like 13 years old, 14 years old, until I was 40, could I, I, I could not get rid of this uh, thing on my stomach. And uh, finally I went to a, a Dr. Brazil is his name in Memphis, and he was a dermatologist. And he said, "Oh, he said I've got I got something for you." He said, "And I asked me if I'd be a test patient, you know." To, and I said, "Sure, I'll do anything, you know." So well, I signed. It was painful the thing. too, wasn't it? Oh, it was painful. It was awful, and uh, especially when in the summer when it was humid, and uh, it was on the insides of my legs and on my stomach. It was awful. And he gave me this uh, a tube of this stuff. He said, I had to sign a thing. And uh, one of them, uh, they would give a placebo to somebody, you know, or, and, and, and he said, this is the real thing. And so he gave it to him and it immediately started to subside. It was gone in three days. Could hardly believe it. That's awesome. You know, felt like running around naked. <laughs> <laughs> and if you were in Portland or Seattle or whatever it was. <laughs> oh, yeah, it'd be, be perfect in, in Portland. <laughs> no, just kidding. Dead of winter, you know. <laughs> we actually thought, we, we, we did actually think we were moving up that we way. Did. I mean, it we is did. We so did. And then they were all fighting it out it's in so the streets. Kind of, no, but I mean, out there and, you know, out outside yeah, of the yeah, city, yeah. it's beautiful. Until we found this place, the you know, trees. we had considered, we did, we considered moving to Seattle and, or Portland or somewhere to up get back, out. Yeah, way I, up there. I had to do it with my health and... It was just a little too cold for us. <laughs> yeah, and it all, and it all worked out. So, any other, any other uh, stories on, on Carl? Because... You know, you talk about everybody else, but you don't really have much of a No, there's not a whole lot to say about Carl. Well, he didn't you guys in... ever hang out a little bit? And... No. No. No, well, <laughs> no, it didn't hang out. Any uh, any of the photos you see of Derek and the Dominoes, you see him, he's kind of, he looks like he's by himself, because he was. He, 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 Maybe he, it was just too much for him. To be. Well, I don't know. But he was indulging as well, wasn't he? Oh, he was indulging <laughs> big time. That's what his demise was, you know, with heroin. Well, can you tell us about the demise? What happened, do you know, with Carl? Well, it's like everybody else that does heroin, you know. Um, well, I mean, when Eric had let him go. Oh, uh, it was, uh, I remember that happening. And um, Eric fired the whole band. Um, the Tulsa band. The Tulsa about. bunch, yeah. He fired them, but by, by, did it by way of, um, uh, 
he was looking after his own health. Eric had to, he had to get his own sanity. Right. You know, and uh, Unfortunately, that was the only way he could do it. He couldn't do it one man at a time. So uh, Ma Bell sent out uh, uh, telegrams or phone grams that Mr. Clapton no longer requires your services, real formal, straight, adios. And he fired everybody at the same, well, by, I mean, by, via Ma Bell. That was, I would think that that would be probably the only way at the time he could do that. You know? Yeah, at the, at the time, that was the only way he could have done it. And, Were you uh, going to confront everybody and have everybody screaming and yelling at oh, you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he couldn't have handled any anything like that. I'm sure everybody would have been respectful had he done it in a different way, but that's the way it happened. And I, I, I funnily enough, I had called Carl just to see what he was up to, you know. Right. And he told me the story about how he, 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 he said, I'm never going to play bass again, ever. Oh, man. And, uh, and then he told me that Eric had fired everybody, you know, all at once. Oh, using the telephones. phone gram, you know, right. telegram, telephone, something. And anyway, um, did it, didn't do it one on one. And Carl had been with him all those years. All of those years, a long time. And uh, he said, I'm never going to play bass again. And I said, just because you got fired? <laughs> I mean, are you giving me a break here? I said, why don't we put a band together and, and just go out as the dominoes? I'll get a, I'll get a guitar player. As a matter of fact, I know a guy in, in, uh, uh, up in Wichita Falls, Texas, named Mike O'Neill. I said, he'd be perfect for us. And uh, he didn't, I called Jim Gordon. Jim was all, he was ready to go, you know. <laughs> so it would have been Jim and Carl and, 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 and Mike O'Neill and, and me, and we was going to go out as the dominoes. And I couldn't talk him into it. I swear I could not talk him into it. Sounded like a good idea to me, you know, do all the dominoes. Wow, and you were, you were willing to work with Jim Gordon again? You didn't, you, you didn't, even at that point, you did not know that he had psychological problems. No, didn't know he had gone all over the edge. So about what year are you talking about that this happened? 80 something. Oh, so it was yeah, close it was, to I think it was like 83 or something that that happened. I remember that Bo was about that tall. Just tall so enough to about... make too much noise on the table. <laughs> yeah. Don't ever get a glass top table if oh, you got geez. kids. God. Dang. <laughs> and especially if you drink, <laughs> you wake up mad every day. <laughs> gonna be banging, 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 you know. <laughs> well, we had that glass top table in the last place, and it was just horrible. Oh, I it was it. awful, and it wasn't ours. It no, was built in. <laughs> that would never happen around this so house. The, no. Yeah, there were never. The only no... thing glass here are the windows. That's it. We're keeping it. Thank that way. goodness. Yeah. We have an awesome fireplace. One of them is, is very large, and it's all solid stone. It's solid stone. Beautiful. Absolutely. You know, I didn't even look, think about it. And then I, you said that one, and sure enough, it's huge, and it's solid stone. Because I hit it, I smacked it yesterday, and, and it I was like, what? Oh, my God, this thing is solid stone. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. It was all carved and specially made for this house. Yeah, yeah. Everything there, uh, everything in this house is uh, was. Oh my gosh! Every, re every really special. We know the history of it, and it was built. Uh, the, the man, Mr. West. We went to the museum and saw a man named Mr. West, and uh, he had built it for one of his daughters. He built four houses here. And he built one for his daughter, and she had cancer, terminal cancer. They went for some treatment, and they uh, had a private plane. And right? a private plane, yes. and it crashed, and she never got to move into this house. It crashed, and they all died on the plane. Yeah, they all died, and um, she and her husband. she and her husband and two other people. But uh, no, and Mr. West was a complete falling down drunk, but a genius. You know, a genius. Uh, Huge uh, rancher, 
Um, when you're talking about huge ranches here, those 20,000 and 30,000 acres, I um, uh, met a man uh, that came by yesterday and we got to talking and about Mr. West and him being a big rancher and this guy said, well, he said, I got a ranch as well. Uh, it's not very big, but uh, he says, only 2,000 acres. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but these other, guys, these other guys have hundreds of acres. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Crazy. And they, they deal with them with helicopters and everything. So I wanted to get back to Carl, and I, I love talking about this, but uh, you were talking about when he was let go, uh, by Eric, and then so what? How, what was your your last conversation? Just sort of ended. It ended that he's just not going to do it. He's not going to pick it up. He's not. He's not interested. It wasn't too much uh, longer. Uh, he uh, they found the Cape Poor Boy. Jim Jim Keltner was calling, trying to get a hold of Carl. Carl was supposed to have done some session or something, you know, in L.A and didn't show up, which is really unlike Carl. And Keltner uh, called Kay Pullboy to go over and see about him. Right. And she went into his house, it was real hot in summertime. His house that he had built directly across the road from my parents' property, he didn't know that. <laughs> of he, all things. When he showed me the photos of his house that he was building, I said, those two lakes, I said, and I said, where? I said, just down the road from a little red schoolhouse, and oh, he said, yeah, goodness. I said, those two lakes, that's my, my mom and dad's place, and he went, what? <laughs> 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 they never finished building there, though, anyway, but uh, Kay went out to his house, and it was hot, and the doors were open, and she found him with his head in the toilet, and he had been dead a few days. But somebody, he had actually died somewhere else. He died at a dealer's house, and they loaded him up and took him over and dumped him at the house. And that's oh. the story I got. That was the story I got. But uh, he was gone. It didn't matter where they found him, you know. Yeah, um, but a to sad way to, uh, to leave, you know. Because he was not, well, I mean, the thing is, is like, they couldn't, that's just the terrible thing to do to somebody, even when you're dead. I mean, uh -huh. for God's sake. Uh -huh. So he didn't, I mean. No, that was the end of it. And when uh, they buried Kay Poor Boy, they buried her next to him. When she passed away, they buried her well, right and then, next to and him. Then, and then Jim, you know, killed his mother. It wasn't long crazy. after that, was it? Yeah, it wasn't long after that. Jim Gordon murdered his mom. He didn't go crazy. He was already he had already psychological been there. problems. Yeah, he, had, he, had, he wasn't on a vacation with sanity, you know. He was <laughs> long gone, you know. I told him he needed help. When, when, I, when we were the Domino's, I said, man, you need to go to the doctor. He said, I, I said as a matter of fact. He yeah, told you he, he'd been have, hearing voices. Yeah. And, you know, he told me that he heard voices, and, and I said, oh, that's just your conscience, you know, telling you what, uh, I said, like, you go to the closet, and it's a, the red shirt or the blue shirt. I mean, you know, yeah, I but this involved green, you know. a lot more than that. Yeah. No, it was deeper than, you know, changing shirts, that's for sure. But the he, drugs, he was, the drugs is what really sent him ex over the edge. Exacerbated everything, and he, he could do copious amounts of, Everything. But that's what happens, and I, somebody had mentioned that on the channel. And, and schizophrenics, if they take the, the drugs, is what helps to, uh, they think, subside all of that, make it subside some. So they end up taking much more. No. And, We're know. talking about lots and lots of drugs. You know, and, uh, yeah. But I, I didn't realize the gravity of it. You know, I Nobody thought, did. You know, no one too did. high. And uh, no, he killed his mom, and he's still in the slammer. You know, he probably won't ever see daylight. But well, no, I mean he, he affected, he's in a he's in a mental health facility. Yeah, he's it, not yeah in the slammer. But, well, it's behind bars. <laughs> well, of course. Yeah, uh, uh, and his, then, uh, but uh, you know his well, people, one, and when people talk about that, there's some people they go, "Oh, poor Jim, poor Jim." I think poor family. Poor his mother, you know, and that and the whole family. Well, the whole situation is sad. It was sad, but the, I mean, the whole family. But prior to prior to that happening, he was abusive towards the women that he was with. I yeah. mean, it was frightening. Yeah. You know, he chased uh, Chris O'Dell, 
or the butcher the knife. The and Stiggy had a key to the to the flat, and I was on 33 Thurlow Street, and Stiggy walked in. The, just so happened that he just walked Just so, so happened. He just came by, opened the door, and Jim had a butcher knife, and he was chasing Chris O'Dell. But I can say that that was like, that kind of stuff happens, and you don't put it together that somebody's mentally ill. Okay, so I can tell you that Delaney was was he was crazy like that yeah, and yeah. but he, he didn't have uh, 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 he wasn't a schizophrenic okay he was just crazy he was just crazy yeah, yeah. and he was abusive and so you wouldn't you wouldn't think put those two things together and so mm -hmm. thank God for her sake that Robert Stigwood walked in at that moment in time and stopped that situation and then with the same with Rita he punched her and you know, everybody would just thought, oh, well, he's just doing drugs and, you know, Man. getting volatile. But he was dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> well, and he was a big guy. Yeah. He was a big guy. Yeah, Delaney was a big guy as well. No kidding. <laughs> you know. Yep. Well, I'm glad you left him. We, <laughs> wouldn't, <laughs> we yeah. wouldn't be here, you know. I, I tell everybody it was like the Red Sea parting, you know. Yeah. I mean, everything yeah. worked out for me that I could just... I was able to leave without. Yeah, being, we've been together ever killed. since. That's right. Twenty four seven, except when I had to go. When my mom passed away, and then again when my brother passed away, you and I've always stayed together. I guess it's, we we cling to each other, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. You know. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we enjoy each other's company. Clinging is a little. Well, I think you like that. You're a romantic. You like that. Yeah, idea. I'm, I'm <laughs> real romantic. You know, with funny hair. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I got up this morning. But a great like Somebody was behind me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I did that. <laughs> My hair. Was... <laughs> Yeah, hair knocking. <laughs> I thought I got <laughs> And this is on my My eyes are watering. I gotta stop. <laughs> okay.